Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Where two or three are gathered. This is one of those sayings we hear repeated a lot. We tend to apply it to those times when only a few people have shown up to some kind of church gathering, some kind of church function. Maybe we were hoping for a bigger turnout, but there were two or three, so we call it a win. When two or three are gathered is a consoling phrase. It's comforting to know that Christ is just as present in a small congregation as in a big one. But if we look at this passage in context, we see there's a lot more to it than offering consolation about a small turnout. In the 18th chapter of Matthew, the context for the gathering of two or three people is a difficult conversation. There has been some kind of damage to the body of Christ, and Jesus promises to be there, to be present in the midst of conflict and help work toward its resolution. In verse 15, Jesus describes a situation in which two parties have had a falling out. One has sinned against the other. That's something for us to stop and notice. This is personal. It's not an issue of one person policing the behavior of another. I noticed you threw trash out of your car window. It's an issue of one person hurting the other enough to fracture the relationship between them. So let's stop and imagine that. We've all been there, right? Been hurt by someone. When that has happened to me, what I want to happen next is for the person who has hurt me to come to me and ask for my forgiveness. Tell me they are sorry and maybe offer chocolate. But that's not what Jesus suggests. The injured party doesn't get to sit in high dudgeon, indignant, righteous, waiting around for the person who did something wrong to come to their senses and apologize. No. Jesus says, if you've been hurt, you are to go to the person who hurt you. Use your words, explain why what they did hurt you, and give them the chance to listen. I want us to notice this choice of words that is the hoped for result here. Jesus says, you will regain that one if they listen. Not apologize, not grovel, not promise to never do it again, not even agree. If they listen, this is a big deal. This is relationship 101 what it takes to maintain a relationship, repair a relationship, regain a brother or a sister. Listening. Listening we can work with. Sure, I might prefer an eloquent and heartfelt apology, but Jesus says listening is the goal. If a person has listened, I have to get off my high horse and start working on forgiveness. Paul says as much in the portion of his letter to the Romans that we read today, I owe, owe my love to everyone. And forgiveness is a part of that. Whether or not they asked for it, whether or not they deserved it. Y'all, Jesus never said this discipleship stuff was gonna be easy or fun. But sometimes the person doesn't listen. Jesus acknowledges that that can happen. In that case, you aren't off the hook. You don't get to go to your room now in high dudgeon and wrap yourself in indignation and righteousness when someone doesn't listen to you. Nope. You find one or two people to go with you and you try again. They are there to confirm your words, to make sure you're communicating effectively, to make sure that what you think you're saying actually matches what it sounds like to someone else. This isn't about shaming the other person or ganging up on them. It's intended to give them the benefit of the doubt to make sure they have been given a clear understanding of what went wrong, to give them another chance to listen. But Jesus acknowledges sometimes that isn't enough either. Sometimes the person won't listen to you and your two best friends. I mean, 
Of course, your two best friends side with you. In that case, you bring it to the church. Again, this isn't about shaming someone. It's as much a check for you as it is about the other person. It's a chance for discernment. Maybe you believe you were wronged, but when you bring it to your community, the community can help you see it in another way. Maybe it wasn't actually a personal affront. Maybe you were having a bad day and took something personal and really the whole thing was just a misunderstanding. But maybe not. Sometimes it really is bad behavior. And I think one thing we can take from this whole conversation and the fact that it crops up in the Bible at all is that bad behavior does happen in real life and shouldn't just be ignored. Bad behavior needs to be addressed. So if the whole community agrees that what happened really was bad behavior and you try again, you try again to address it with the person who behaved badly in the hopes that the authority of the church will convince the person to listen. Again, the standard we're going here is listening, not apologizing, not agreeing, listening, being willing to hear and be present for the conversation. And if the person won't listen to the church, their church, their community, then it isn't just your relationship with that person that has fractured. It's their relationship with the church. It indicates that they've got some stuff going on that doesn't have anything to do with you. If they can't listen to the body of people who love them, they've already separated themselves from the church. They've already dissociated themselves from the body. And in that case, you treat them like a Gentile or a tax collector because those are the people who need to be loved and included and invited. They need to be fed. It's hard to continue to love and include and invite and feed someone who won't listen to you. Jesus never said this discipleship stuff would be fun or easy. He did say that if you are gathered in his name, he'll be there. Because after all, it will be Jesus loving and Jesus including and Jesus inviting and feeding through you. Now that doesn't mean that we've excused or ignored the bad behavior. The relationship is broken. Trust has been lost. And for the relationship to be repaired, trust will have to be earned. And that takes time. There's no requirement or expectation that any of us put ourselves in positions that would set us up to be hurt again. Sometimes we need to love people from a distance. The goal is reunion being part of the same body. But if one of you is a toe and one of you is an ear, you probably don't interact directly all that often. At a distance, you can rejoice in the health and ministry of the other. And I think that's okay. The body of Christ is big. There truly is room for all of us. So much bigger than our church, so much bigger than our denomination. Within Christendom, there's a lot that we disagree about, but we don't have to agree to remain part of the body. We have to be able to listen. We have to be able to forgive. We have to be able to keep welcoming and including and collaborating. The mission of the church, that's the big C church, the church universal, all churches, not just St. Michael's church, is to restore all people to unity with God and with each other in Christ. The mission of the church is not to make sure that the church is full of people who think like we do. The mission of the church is not to make sure that the church is full of people who never hurt each other. When we do hurt each other, when we get hurt, it's our mission, it's our Christian responsibility, our debt to our brothers and sisters in Christ to do everything in our power to maintain and restore unity. Today is our first service to have, our first Sunday to have two services at St. Michael's. There isn't any brokenness. There isn't anything that needs to be healed. And also, we're gonna have to do some work to be able to maintain the sense of community that we have here. 
The goal is not to have two separate congregations, but one congregation, one body, with flexibility of worship time. To that end, I'm asking you to make it a priority to be here between the services from time to time. Make sure to engage with people who attend the services you don't usually attend. And while you're trying to decide if you're going to be a regular at the 8.30 or at the 10.30, remember that Christ will be present at both. Thanks be to God.